So that was the announcements. Now, next up is Draja Nikolic, who is the reactive guy, apparently, and he's going to speak about uh, going reactive with Spring 5. Thank you. Okay, so reactive is a word that uh, we are hearing um, uh, each, every, each day more and more. So it is really in, in a hype. And uh, everybody is talking about reactive, similar like uh, there was talk about microservices like three, four years ago. And uh, basically, although those concept are, are, concepts are not that new, um, but uh, they, they are uh, actually becoming popular because something got changed uh, in, the, in the enterprises. And in general, when it comes to reactive, although it is not a new concept, uh, it somehow resonates with the uh, modern enterprise systems and how they are built. Uh, this presentation uh, was, uh, should be about uh, some uh, basic uh, uh, Informations about what Reactive is and uh, how uh, this will be done and building blocks in, in, in Spring. Uh, at the end, we will have also some, some short demo. Uh, I guess that uh, most of you attended yesterday's Dr. Wenkel presentation about uh, functional and reactive programming, uh, and also there was uh, another session about Reactive. So I'll try not to go uh, uh, too, too much uh, deep into this uh, like uh, theory, and, and, but, but just to, to mention uh, those things which are, are important for, for the talk today. So, uh, short about myself, I'm Draža Nikolic from Niš, Serbia, uh, some two hours drive from, from here, and uh, I am working as a Java technical lead in, in company Sivus, and uh, yeah, you can easily find me on uh, on uh, Twitter or LinkedIn or other, other social networks. So when, it compare, when we compare how the, the things and server environments uh, uh, looked like uh, some decade ago, uh, we know that before uh, some uh, enterprise installations con contain about like tens of servers, then the response times were measured in, in seconds. It was okay to be um, downtime some two, three hours in, in night per weekend. Uh, and the data was measured in, in gigabytes. But nowadays, uh, 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 because we are also going into cloud, we also have uh, like Amazon or, or Google um, installations where we can have a thousand of virtual machines or services. Uh, and uh, response times are now expected to be in a milliseconds. No downtime is, is uh, any more acceptable. Plus, the data volume is increasing more and more each day, so it goes to, to terabytes to, or even petabytes. So definitely, comparing to a decade ago, things, things changed, and we need somehow to, to react on, on this change. So um, uh, in general, we in, in, as Java developers were taught to, to handle uh, the, the problem when we have some increased load, uh, well, in general, yeah, easy. We just spin up more threads. Uh, because nowadays, even our cell phones have multiple cores, so why not we just parallelize things and uh, uh, work them in, in, uh, in multiple parallel threads? Uh, so all the main applications are OK working in, in, in this uh, model. Uh, but in general, uh, if you are working uh, with uh, with uh, threading model, or thread per request, you have um, problems of uh, uh, that uh, multi-thread applications are actually working with a shared and synchronous state. They are, in general, blocking. Uh, they have really strong coupling between each other. They are hard to compose. And uh, they, in general, uh, uh, use our system in inefficiently. So there is one analogy I've read on one blog on the internet is that uh, when you compare in driving on a highway to driving on the, in the street, in the city, where you have those traffic lights, so on a highway you can easily drive along miles with, with other cars and nobody's uh, uh, interacting each other, but uh, interrupting each other, but when you are in a city you need to synchronize your street uh, with, with other streets, so uh, even though your car can go fast as on a highway, you are still slower because of, of uh, this problem. So um, 
generally, the, uh, there is a, uh, this uh, new, new concept, this paradigm of, of reactive programming, which is uh, actually not a silver bullet, not that uh, something it is promised that it will solve all our problems, uh, neither that uh, this is a solution for, for each and every problem. Uh, but in, in general, um, we are so used uh, uh, that we are implementing this CRUD application so that uh, we have uh, something to, to write to database and then read from it. But actually, there are some um, systems where we do not need really to persist data. We just need to uh, efficiently uh, track how the data uh, goes in or goes out, so it's how it, it changes, and uh, then uh, we do not need really to, to persist it anywhere. So reactive programming is basically about the, the, uh, implementing those event-driven systems, and uh, what it does, it moves our imperative logic uh, as we uh, used to write to, to write asynchronous non-blocking and functional style code, and this then allows us to uh, implement stable and scalable uh, accesses to other external systems we, we depend on. And uh, here are some of the examples, like uh, monitoring stock price or streaming videos or uh, uh, implementing some spreadsheets um, or uh, some uh, uh, features in, like in e-commerce applications where we need to do fraud detection, etc. cetera. Uh, when to use reactive? So, as I said, it is not the solution for, for each and every problem, but if your application um, needs to deal with, with external services where the networking can be an issue and uh, there could be latencies or uh, some services you depend on can fail, uh, then when this scalability uh, or, or you have some highly concurrent operations are in concern, then definitely reactive is uh, one approach you should think of or when you have uh, uh, applications where your clients uh, cannot uh, really handle all the, the information they got for, for, for the service for, from producers so that you can back, uh, implement this uh, flow control of, of information which comes from producers to, to clients so to, to handle this uh, uh, so-called back pressure. Yeah. Uh, just shortly, uh, you, we've heard about uh, Reactive Manifesto. So some five years ago, uh, some people uh, from the industry, yeah, leading companies and, and individuals, uh, they sat together and uh, observed uh, that uh, scaling systems by, <coughs> by buying larger servers and doing multi-threading are actually becoming uh, too complex, inefficient, and in general expensive. So um, they tried to, to express how the, the system should, should um, be in order to, to, to be fit for, for the current uh, enterprise needs. So that's how this reactive manifesto was, was born. Um, we have here on the top response, that means to, to react to users. So uh, it means that uh, it should try to be as responsive as possible because uh, responsiveness is a cornerstone of the usability, and I mean we do not want to wait uh, something if, if it's lost for, for a long time. But not just that, it actually um, puts you in a, a thinking way that you should build your systems uh, in a way that you should uh, uh, that, that they should. Uh, 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 heal themselves or actually be implemented in a way that if something goes down that it should be pro provisioned and go up uh, faster, uh, etc. So, uh, resilient, uh, that means react to failures and that uh, failures are something which, which happens and with, uh, we should do that, this gracefully or um, usually the, the resilient part is implemented uh, through some um, duplication or uh, or, or, or some other way how we can uh, still uh, present something to the users uh, uh, comparing to that uh, they are waiting in, indefinitely to, to, uh, to get some information. Uh, elastic means that uh, uh, system should be able to use more or less resources depending of, of its needs. Yeah? 
And the message driven is uh, that um, react to, to uh, so uh, direct to, to events in a sense that uh, systems are now uh, loosely coupled and they, they have uh, boundaries between, sem between themselves uh, uh, via those message brokers or this messaging system. So they are loosely coupled. We can have a, a location transparency, etc. Uh, in general, the reactive manifesto is uh, uh, just a prescription. So uh, uh, this is like, uh, yeah, okay, good to know, and we know in which direction to think, but we need some thing to, 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 to work with. So reactive streams specification, which is based on the, the reactive manifesto. And um, in general, uh, you will see what, what, what uh, it contains just some, some couple of, of interfaces, but intention of, of reactive streams is in general that we uh, are able to um, uh, uh, achieve this uh, vertical scaling within the Java virtual machine so that with, uh, with the same amount of memory, with the same CPU cores uh, on the single virtual machine to, to achieve what uh, um, we were usually do before by horizontal uh, scaling where we uh, spin up more nodes, more different uh, uh, service so through, through clustering. And uh, in general, it is a standard for, for asynchronous data stream processing. And the, the important part there is this flow control, so that you have a possibility to, uh, uh, to, to control when the clients are ready to receive the data that they ask, OK, I need, I can do uh, process data, please uh, produce me, give me, give me more, or to say stop, I, I cannot do, do more. And, then those um, will, will not, uh, this production of data will not, not happen. And um, as uh, the system should be resilient so that exceptions are first class citizens, actually exceptions are just some messages. So you will send a message uh, that it is an exception. And uh, basically in, in that case, the, the stream is uh, uh, yeah, closed or stopped, or um, you can also uh, control that when you define your reactive pipelines, we'll talk, talk about what to do if exception happened. Do you want to, to stop and handle it somehow, or you want to proceed with some fallback mechanism, etc. So um, within the Java 9, uh, we have, um, uh, so reactive streams are, are, are those uh, uh, four interfaces. And um, within Java 9, we have uh, uh, this flow interface uh, where it has all those statical uh, defined interfaces within it. Uh, and this is just a so, uh, API we, we work on. And uh, it contains of, of uh, you know, publisher, which is an interface which can accept subscribers. Then a subscriber is an um, interface uh, which can then uh, uh, receive uh, some, this subscription object from the publisher once it subscribes. And then he has a possibility to this back pressure, this flow control by using this on next, um, uh, sorry, uh, using this uh, subscription object and, and uh, request how many more information it, 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 it will. Uh, uh, need or to, to cancel it, and they are what will happen when the new message are received or when an error is received or when it is complete. And uh, yeah, subscription is something, so some glue between the, the publisher and subscriber. And processor is just uh, 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 one uh, node which is uh, uh, subscriber and publisher at the same time. So I've just described you how, how it, it works. So uh, yeah, so w w once you get a subscription uh, from, the, so from the publisher, you're able now to, to request more messages or, or to say, I do not need any more. But uh, of course, this um, is not meant that uh, we are implementing against those uh, specifications, because uh, it is rather not that straightforward. And uh, um, for, uh, for that, we have a different 
uh, React Stream implementations for Java, like uh, Java or Project Reactor from Pivotal, Akka Streams, uh, Vertex 3, uh, etc. And um, uh, generally, when you look at, at it at the first glance, it, it looks like uh, yeah, a bit complicated, but uh, once you start to, to work with it, uh, it will be more and more straightforward. And uh, in generally, uh, working like this, it uh, makes you to, to implement asynchronously uh, your code, so that the asynchronous is the core of your system, uh, plus it naturally leads to, to microservices, so to, to, the, to, to this environment. And uh, uh, also, you will then be working in, in a functional programming uh, style. So, uh, uh, in general, now the reactive when it comes to, to reactive streams, uh, so we have some uh, uh, projects which implement them. But still, uh, when you need now to, to work with, with it, to implement something, uh, you will see that it is uh, then still not enough. So you need some high order implementations, like how you will. <coughs> Um, so, uh, how you will implement, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, communication over HTTP, then security, or, or, uh, or s some, some other things which, uh, uh, which you need. And uh, um, in Spring 5, which came, uh, um, uh, yeah, sorry, which came uh, GA in September 2017, among other things, there is also support for this reactive web framework, uh, which is called Spring Web Flux, which gives these um, uh, reactive building blocks uh, you can use for, for building reactive applications. So it is based on a, a project reactor. Um, it is one of the, uh, of the libraries which implement re reactive streams. And uh, basically, uh, Project Director has um, uh, two publisher, two different publisher uh, implementations. One is Mono, and uh, this is actually a publisher which emits zero or one element, uh, which can end successfully or, or could be an error. This is something similar, like for for example, a completable future in, in Java 8. And um, the next one is is Flux. Uh, which emits zero or n elements, yeah. so successful or, or with an error. Yeah. Uh, in general, um, in generally, it, it, uh, how it functions, it uh, functions with this uh, so-called deferred push-pull uh, model. It means that uh, deferred because uh, it is lazy. Nothing will be actually uh, propagated from the producer to the subscriber until the subscriber requests for it. Yeah. So uh, then uh, pool is uh, in a sense that uh, subscriber must, so the client must say, OK, I, 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 I need some, some data. Please, please give it to me. And then the push is that pr producer now pushes down the stream the, the new messages, the new data. So here uh, various things, uh, uh, how it can looks like. So you can see here like flat map. It is similar like a flat map with Java 8 streams, so that uh, we can uh, convert this circle to yeah, two squares and then put in the same stream. But what we can also do, which is uh, not really usual for the uh, Java 8 uh, streams, is that we can now, from one stream, end up having two separate streams in this uh, group, by example, for example. Or we can even. If we have two streams, we can combine them. Here is zipping one element from here and one from this, and put in the same stream as, as combined. So there are different uh, possibilities. This is one example of um, how this reactor pipeline looks like. And uh, you see here, um, so the, the first line is uh, getting uh, favorites for some specific user from, from somewhere. Then uh, by the, this line, we are setting, OK, if more than 800 milliseconds are needed to produce this, then uh, raise a timeout exception. Um, so the user will not wait. Maybe we, we will do some, something else. Yeah? Uh, then we are saying, OK, please do not stop this pipeline. But if error happens, either 
by timeout or by some other error which can happen in the, in the get favorites, uh, then we will try to get this uh, favorites of the user from, from some cache we prepared before. Uh, then, regardless how we end up here, we are doing flat map, so get details of, uh, of this uh, uh, favorite service. And then, um, if it is empty, then we will not show nothing to the user, but we will then use some general suggestions, uh, which is common for all the users. We are interested now to uh, take only five, and by this we can say, okay, uh, when you come here, execute this in this specific UI thread. Uh, when, it, when we talk about threads, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the implementation is actually working like uh, uh, some event loop like we have it in, in JavaScript or Node.js, and uh, uh, there is no guarantee that any of those lines will work on some specific thread, so it could work uh, on, on the same thread, but could be that all of those lines work on different threads. Uh, you have also possibility to say that uh, this, when it comes to here, then all other operations should be then executed on this specific thread. Yeah. So this is um, how it works, but in general, when we are talking about reactive, we are not thinking about threads, because uh, we are more thinking uh, in a, like a callback fashion. So we register someone, call me when you have the data I need, and exit. Uh, and then when they get the data, it will then trigger uh, our callback yeah, uh, to process. So having the code like this, actually, if you finish this, nothing will happen. Because uh, as for Java it streams, this uh, is uh, lazy and will not happen until there is no subscriber. So producer will not produce any data until someone actually needs it and wants, wants this data. So by, by this subscriber, we are saying that uh, in a case of success, that we should show this in some UI list. Or uh, here, if uh, error happens, then we would want to show some, some error pop-up, for example. So nothing is produced until there is a subscriber who, who needs it. So when we come uh, to, to uh, talk about Spring 5 Reactive, uh, uh, there are uh, different uh, modules and supports uh, for, for, for this. But in general, the Spring Web Flux module is one who is providing this uh, reactive uh, uh, support and reactive endpoints for, for uh, Spring applications. Uh, and um, uh, in, in general, uh, we have, um, if you see here, that uh, uh, we, uh, we can use this um, Spring MVC uh, uh, um, controllers, and uh, it will still work. I'll just show you the, the difference. So it will work e even with this blocking API or, or using this new reactive uh, API, or there is also a new router functions implementation which gives you possibility to define your endpoints in a more functional way. So um, uh, here is um, an example uh, of the annotation-based programming model, uh, where you see this is a old standard REST controller, or it could be a standard Spring MVC controller. And um, here we have a get mapping for person or get mapping for person of ID. This is all the same. But just notice the difference here. Here, so we are not returning um, here some, some string where this should, should go, or not returning the uh, object uh, itself, but we are returning here the, the flux, so zero or n elements, or mono when we have zero or one element. And basically, uh, what, what happens is that uh, uh, the code, uh, when the, the thread reading this code, executing this code, it will just, uh, when you're uh, going to slash person, it will just exit this, and uh, this will just register itself once this method, find all, returns the data. It will then um, wake up some, some thread for, for returning data to the client and then it will return. But it will not block here. The same is also uh, for here. So 
uh, I mean, just to, to return here, basically, uh, you can also implement these reactive endpoints on, on uh, Tomkit or Jettiso, which are uh, which uh, have this uh, uh, non-blocking I/O API. Uh, so the Spring will know where, where, which uh, which API to to use and to uh, to work with. But you also can can work with with Netiso, which is reactive. Um, uh, servlet, uh, servlet engine. Uh, okay, and um, so apart from this, there is a new functional programming um, web framework, which is uh, new with, with Spring 5, and uh, in general, you have here two things. So one is to define how you will uh, uh, transform request to the response. So basically, you find a function which uh, transforms request to, 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 to uh, response. I mean, basically, this is what, what we do also in, in here. Uh, but um, this is done in, in this uh, functional and, and, uh, and reactive way. So here we have, um, OK, flux of, of persons, uh, which is coming from this repository. We assume that it is also a reactive repository. We'll talk about that shortly. And uh, here we are creating the response, which is OK. Uh, content type is application JSON. And in the body, we are putting this, um, uh, this flux of, of persons, and they will be then converted uh, properly. And um, here, the, the same is, but um, we are just uh, doing a create person. So we are not now talking about uh, HTTP verb, so is it get, is it put or not. We are just saying how the request should be converted to, to response. Okay. So, and the second part of when defining this functional web uh, model is to define the router. And uh, basically, here you are specifying that uh, route on, on uh, get request for person slash ID, uh, and that uh, client accepts this application JSON, we are actually using the get persons uh, handler. Okay? So what, what we implemented here. Yeah? And in a similar way, you can, we can define also here a, a post and uh, et cetera. So this is how then we uh, complete this uh, uh, endpoint. Note that uh, here, this is um, just a statical mapping, so we cannot do much about that. We need to, to de define it. It is a get mapping. But here, this get, uh, actually, it is an interface. And uh, you can also have your own implementations of that if you need to have some specific things like, OK, if it is a get and uh, maybe has some headers which satisfy this and that condition. So in this functional way, you, you are having the possibility to, to have uh, more fine-grained control when, when it is needed. Yeah. So this is the, the, the difference. Yeah. Uh, when we're talking about um, it, uh, the client, so before we talk about how we create a server, now we also can have a reactive client in, in, in Spring 5. And uh, basically, it works similarly like, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, um, like a, a REST, uh, REST client. Uh, but uh, here, in, instead of um, REST template, we are using this web client. And this is a reactive um, uh, client. Uh, and uh, we are, you know, in a sim similar way, we create it and then say, okay, this is the URL. Then on here on this exchange, it will, um, uh, uh, it will actually uh, propagate all this, and it will just register some callback uh, in order to execute this part once the, the request comes. So, sorry, once the response comes from, from the server. So this is the difference. So nothing is blocking here. So, I mean, blocking is until uh, it process those, those lines and define this callback, but it is not executed. One, only will execute when, when the response is received. And uh, while waiting, uh, then uh, some, something else could be then executed. Uh, 
when it comes to, to WebSocket client, it is a uh, natural uh, to, to implement in an interactive way because it is an open channel where the data is, is coming in. And um, here, for example, is one example where you can use this WebSocket client implementation. And um, uh, you can uh, execute uh, here one uh, uh, open connection to this uh, Echo uh, uh, WebSocket uh, 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 server. And then once the, the message is, is coming, then you log, log that. So when we're talking about uh, um, uh, the, the, we have a web uh, which is reactive now, uh, implemented, and uh, all our endpoints are reactive, and our code uh, is reactive. But at the end, you, you will reach to, to some blocking part, which is usually the database. And uh, this will still, still be like, like this, but uh, for some uh, uh, no SQL databases, we have uh, like uh, uh, MongoDB, Cassandra, or, or Redis, we have already these reactive drivers. Uh, so we are able to, to communicate with the database in, in a reactive manner. And uh, what, the, what does it mean, actually? Uh, you can, for example, create one query to the database, which, uh, for example, selects all tweets having hash J prime 2018. And uh, uh, it is not returned all of them uh, immediately, but it is returned, uh, for example, all which exist now, but the, the connection doesn't break there. Once the new tweet come, your code, which is calling this reactive database, will get new records once they, they come. So this is how, how it works. But until the, 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 the code is waiting for it, it, it can, this thread does not, it is not blocking on this thread, but actually uh, threads and system resources or CPU and memory can be used to process some, some other things. But this is implemented then in the implementation of the reactive um, libraries like, like uh, uh, Reactor. And uh, in order to help us here, the, uh, in Spring Data Project, uh, we have uh, this uh, reactive CRUD repositories, which is uh, now extension of the standard CRUD repository in a sense that we are uh, having now this flux or mono returned as a return type of, of uh, our methods. And also, if you are familiar with Spring Data, I mean, basically there are some um, uh, logic and some mechanisms so uh, uh, that uh, how, how you define here that this find by author will actually uh, search by author name of, from this string which is in the book, book object. So you can also construct your, your methods in this uh, uh, repository interface in the, in the same way. Uh, when it comes to security, um, I mean, more or less, it is, it is uh, everything the same, except nothing is the same in, uh, uh, on, the, on the inside. Because um, if you know the Spring Security is uh, having this uh, our, our authorization object and this security context in, within a thread, in a thread local variable. But we are now not using threads. We are not having a, a, a request, a thread per request model because you don't know in which thread your, your code will execute, your reactive code will execute. So uh, when you enable this uh, web flux security, uh, you are actually uh, enable the, the possibility that uh, uh, it can return you the, the, this security object when it is needed, but it is on some other place, not on a, on a thread local variable, because this, this doesn't work anymore. Um, regarding uh, reactive method security, so when you want to secure your method, uh, like for example here, which is a, a reactive method, uh, I mean, the, the, this pre-authorized uh, annotation is the same, but in order for it to work in this uh, uh, reactive approach, then we, you need to enable this reactive method security. So there are also many other things uh, which, can, um, which came with, with the Spring 5 and Spring Boot 2, which, which was uh, released like a month and a half ago, uh, which are related to, to, to reactive. Uh, for example, 
uh, sp uh, Spring Data Stream, uh, where you have some abstractions over EBITDQ and, uh, and Kafka streams. Uh, and that you can also work on, uh, on different uh, other um, uh, things. So Spring is very broad and, and uh, have a lot of um, components. So definitely something to, to, to check out. And uh, co moving from Spring Boot 1 to Spring Boot 2 should be more or less straightforward. And uh, I would definitely encourage you to, to try this. So I have a short de demo. Um, I hope it will work because I will need to look at that screen, um, not mine here. So, OK. Uh, basically, it is uh, uh, a uh, web application which, uh, uh, which has uh, some, uh, which is simulating uh, calling. Uh, so we have some endpoint which calls some service which is slow, some external service which is slow. And uh, uh, okay, so it is using the Spring Boot uh, two, and uh, we have this starter web flux. Okay, and um, um, so we have the. Oops. So we have this uh, employee object, which is just some some yeah, plain pojo. Uh, then we have. Uh, here an employee service, which has those methods find by ID, find all, or find by gender, and they are all uh, reactive. You see those, those uh, reactive types. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, this is the, the implementation. Basically, it will uh, have some um, external service uh, from which uh, uh, we will uh, get the, the data and the uh, of course, this is uh, yeah a bit mocked. So you see here, I'm producing the flux of employees, okay. And I also have this delay elements duration of two seconds. Yeah, uh, so they will be delayed of of, of two seconds. So um, uh, so back here, uh, so here we are filtering. So we are applying this, this filter operation, so uh, like we are doing for, for the uh, uh, Spring, uh, sorry, for, for the Stream API. Uh, and we want to get here just an, uh, yeah, by ID from, from this uh, flux, yeah. So it is nothing special, special here, yeah, it's just simple filter. Um, now here uh, in the controller, this is uh, this first type an annotation based with what, what we talked before. So we have here a REST controller, okay? Uh, it has this repository, which uh, uh, contacts, or actually it should be called service, but okay. Uh, and what, what it does is, uh, uh, Okay, so it will uh, here just call the repository and uh, call this method. It already returns this mono of employee. So um, yeah, it will just exit here. And we have this slash employees and, uh, and this one is uh, filtering by gender using this, okay, gender uh, pet variable. Yeah? So um, we also have this functional way. I will just show it, but let's first uh, start the application. Um, okay. So uh, you will see now when uh, when uh, the application starts. Um, actually, what uh, the application server we are running on is a Netty. So this is reactive uh, server, and it's running on, on 8080. And now let's uh, do some calls. Uh, OK. So uh, we are calling this first endpoint. I hope it will work. Uh, so you see here that. Um, since we have a, this delay of two seconds, so uh, actually uh, each employee here in the list is coming from this service, from this repository, by the delay of two seconds, because, for example, some network latency. But 
the, uh, we are uh, not blocking there when, uh, when we are, uh, we are not blocking here in the controller when we are waiting for the, the data, but um, uh, actually this, this works in a reactive way and it will uh, just register a callback. So when, when the one data come, it will send it to the client. The other data come, send the other one. So similar uh, story here is also for, uh, for example, let's try this. Um, so we have some search uh, by gender, female. Notice here that it will take a bit more time because it now goes reactively through all those, uh, uh, this flux, or so initial list of those uh, employees, but uh, the female ones are not on the first or second, but it will go one by one and each is delayed by two seconds. That's why it, it uh, takes a bit more time. So um, we have now, to do this, but using this uh, functional wave framework, um, as we said, we, we need to, to define this uh, handler, which transforms re request to the response. And uh, uh, so for, for this all employees, it will uh, just, uh, so it is a spring bin, okay? And uh, one server uh, responds okay, and it will go this, reactive method. So similar uh, is here. Note that uh, we are uh, returning this content type of application stream JSON so that uh, actually the clients who know, knows this, like yeah, curl or, 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 or uh, Google Chrome, will not close the connection but will wait uh, and keep connection open uh, and uh, accepting uh, new data. So <laughs> uh, what we also need to uh, to define is the, the router. So we said, okay, the now v2 slash employees uh, endpoint will actually use this all employees uh, handler. So this, this method we just showed. So just quickly to, to show this here. Um, so v2. So you see it, it, it works uh, the same. Um, Basically, both, uh, both ways are, are working on the same foundation of the, the reactive implementation in, in, in Spring 5 with, with Spring Web Flux. And uh, you can use either one or the other, or you can combine them like, like I did uh, here. Uh, but basically, the, the difference is that uh, uh, it is not blocking. So your, your um, threads will not wait until uh, some, some call is re received from the uh, from some uh, database or some, some service. But still, I mean, you, you need to, uh, when implementing in an interactive fashion, you need to think uh, uh, in, in which area you are reaching this blocking part and where are the, those constraints you, you need to, to handle so that um, uh, your code does not block on, 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 on some, uh, some place. Uh, where it, it is expected to, to be reactive. So it is a bit a paradigm shift uh, and uh, a bit dif uh, requires for us to, to think uh, differently. Uh, but in general, uh, with this uh, functional uh, approach uh, should be straight straightforward. And uh, we should be able to easily and uh, effectively express our logic in these asynchronous blocks which will be executed in a specific sequence and specific order. So, um, uh, okay. so that is uh, in general what, uh, what I had to talk today. We have some, some more minutes. Do you maybe have some questions you can answer? Please. Okay, no I mean, it's already late, so I understand that. Uh, if you have some, some other questions, you can also reach me here, or, or you can find me on the uh, network. So um, uh, there are here in the presentation, I'll be uh, also sharing this, so there are different references and attributions from where I, I, I get all those informations, and I really um, um, encourage you to, to check, if, uh, of course, I mean, Dr. Venkat, uh, then, uh, Martin Oderski, the, the founder of Scala, the Josh Long, and many others who are, uh, so 
um, uh, uh, there are a lot of documentations online about Reactive, and, uh, and you can uh, also find a lot of uh, talks and, uh, and blogs about this, so uh, definitely uh, something to, to, to check. Yeah. So to conclude this uh, presentation, uh, wherever, whenever it makes sense, so it's not a silver bullet, yeah? whenever it, it is applicable, be proactive and go reactive. And Spring will help you on this journey. Thank you.